Good afternoon, everybody. I am very excited to be coming to you at the end of our very first week of school. I am so impressed with everything that I saw this week, uh, we, as, as you will see in the News Bites edition that is just about to come out in a little bit. Um, some of the things that I saw, that I heard, and that I felt during this week uh, from all stakeholders. Uh, but I didn't want to end the week without coming out to you with a message. Uh, what's the good news will be coming out to you. I said it was going to be today. It is not going to be today. I want to make sure that I get those resources for you um, around feedback, inclusive learning communities, using student goals, uh, student learning targets, and also uh, using SMART goals. Still need a little bit of work on, on some of the resources for you. So I want that to be really good when it comes out. Uh, but what I did want to share with you is story time with Kristen. I read this book to the school leadership team, and I think it only fitting that we end our first week with it because what I saw this week um, is very representative to what I think you all did as teachers. This is a children's book. Um, it is a book that really transcends the ages. You could even take this book and read it to your students next week. Doesn't matter if they're in kindergarten or their seniors. You might get a few chuckles if they're seniors, but I think that they'll really appreciate the sentiment. And this book is called, What Do You Do With the Problem? You can see the illustration here. Hopefully you can see some of the pictures while I read. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with a problem, I thought. I wanted to make it go away. I shoot it. I scowled at it. I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and I worried about that. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself but it still found me. And the more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. I couldn't take it anymore. This had to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up. I realized that I had to face it. So even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity it was an opportunity for me to learn and to grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. Every problem 
as an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. What do you do with a problem by Kobe Yamada? And what Groton Dunstable does with a problem, the problem that we faced this year as we opened school, is people put signs outside of buildings the night before school starts, and they really communicate how they feel about being able to be back with their teachers. We pass out plexiglass, we buy hand sanitizer, we unload HEPA filter machines, we rearrange classrooms, we change the language in our classrooms, we help children understand what it means to be six feet apart, we teach kids at home, we teach kids in school, we motivate each other. We have some doubt sometimes, but we pick each other back up and we move forward and we open school. And that's what you all did this week for the kids and the families in Groton Dunstable. Um, I know that I speak on behalf of myself and Dr. Chesson when I say we appreciate you, we thank you, and you certainly know what to do with a problem. You saw the opportunities, you structured your schedules and your classes and your time and your energy towards solving that problem um, by just seeing the opportunity in it. And I hope you have a wonderful, well-deserved weekend with no problems at all. But if they do happen to come your way, I know because I've watched you see the opportunity in those problems. Um, I look forward to a wonderful second week of school. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend.